Today, in this video, what I want to do is give you a few color combos. When I was a child, I was told there's no such thing as a blue tree. And I say now, want to bet? This is a print of an actual painting called Blue Tree that was ordered this week that I embellished. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about there is no blue tree. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Julia Veenstra. I'm a Canadian artist carried in galleries across the country. I own my own gallery where I represent artists and I do a lot of art coaching and teaching. Let's get back to that blue tree. When I was a child, I think about fourth or fifth grade, I was drawing in class and we had to draw a favorite scene and I was using a blue crayon to draw a blue tree. And the teacher came around and said, Julia, there are no blue trees. Now, I could have taken that criticism to heart and said, oh my goodness, I'm doing something wrong. But to me, and I remember thinking it, I thought, it's a drawing. Why do I, why do we care if the tree is blue? Plus I'm like, aren't there trees called blue spruces? I may have liked gardening even way back then. So I'm here to say, paint the blue tree, paint the whatever, paint the purple face, paint the purple cow. Let's use color with abandon. Let's use color with freshness. Don't be tied to the fact that, you know, the, the leaves are generally green and the branches are brown. You can do whatever you want. You can develop your own style, your own color sense. And I believe that everyone has a color sense and everyone has a palette. Today, in this video, what I want to do is give you a few color combos. It's gonna be a really straightforward video. It's gonna be a few color combos of some favorite blends that I have found that I use all the time and that I use instinctually. You may really enjoy these color blends. You may learn a few things or get a, a color tip, but you also may have some color blends that you use that I would really love for you to comment below so that we can all glean from your expertise too. So let's go ahead and let's play with some color. I've got a white canvas, a gessoed canvas, uh, stapled to my abstract board. Here's a painting that I'm working on. And you guys asked me in the last video because I felt like I'm getting somewhere with these abstracts with a mop brush. So side note, I'm going to be using on my, my extra white canvas today to show you things, a Princeton Aqua Elite three quarter inch mop brush. Okay. All right, let's get to it. Every artist has favorite colors. One of my favorite colors is green gold. This is green gold by Golden and it is absolutely one of my favorite colors. And I do a lot of different things with green gold. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what green gold looks all on its own here. And then I'm going to start doing some color mixing with it. And this is, this is going to be, I hope an abstract. So I hope what I do just kind of counts as first layers for it. Okay. I had to go get my water and my coffee. All right. So we've got green gold. What I love about green gold is it's, it's, it's got a yellow, a very warm yellow, let me make sure, very warm yellow uh, under, you know, tone to it. It's absolutely great. I can make it thicker. So this is a wash. This is a little bit thicker. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now watch what happens when I touch a permanent magenta, okay? So actually, I'm gonna give you permanent magenta beside it. Let me get another paintbrush. 
I like Permanent Magenta by Windsor Newton. So I use all different um, color brands. So this is a beautiful Windsor Newton. And as you know, I don't tend to use just one color on my brush, so I do lots of mixing. So there's Permanent Magenta, and there is a Green Gold. So these are kind of, kind of a red, blend and a, and a warming yellow blend, very much complimentary, right? So when I take permanent magenta and mix it with green gold, it becomes the most gorgeous, warm, beautiful orange, surprisingly. If I add a little more green gold, it's just a glorious, glorious, rich, warm color that I have been using lately and adding that to my abstract. So here I'm just going to layer a bit of that green gold into that magenta and it just creates the most beautiful autumnal colors. Okay, so another color that I love to use Another color that I love to touch with green gold is teal. Also by Golden. It is a gorgeous color and I love so in my color mixing, I tend to touch, touch the green gold, touch a little bit of teal, and I get a very, very pretty tealy green. This, this creates, when you blend a little bit of color into, if I use green gold throughout this whole painting, but I'm, and I'm blending it into all the other colors, this whole painting is gonna be harmonious. If I use green gold in all my reds, just a little little touch, it becomes a harmonious painting and the colors just seem to go together. So this teal is a great addition to green gold. This is teal on its own. Okay, so now you see with a just with a little touch of green gold, it just creates gorgeous color. Okay, next. I also love to use turquoise, which is a darker version of teal with green gold. Oh, am I shaking you up there? So I often use teal and turquoise together. And that just creates glorious, glorious color. Teal is a very dark color. Let me throw some in over here. There's a plain teal. But when I touch it with, or turquoise rather, when I touch it with teal, it gives a slightly, my own version of turquoise. When you color mix, you get your own versions. Now, let's touch teal, turquoise, teal and green gold let me see where i want to put it and you get a beautiful absolutely stunning warmer green that really is a harmonious blend with all of that so it's a little bit of a color lesson on blending. It's a little bit of a color lesson on color harmony. How to make all the colors in your painting work is by make, mixing them all together, even in a just a little tiniest bit. It, it just creates a harmony that can't be denied. Okay, let me look at what else I love to use. Oh, I love to use... I love to use a uh, manganese blue by Golden. That's this blue. 
And let's put that where we are we running out of space. So here is a manganese blue all on its own. I love touching white. I know that's really not mixing too much color, but white with manganese blue just creates the most gorgeous blues. So I often also love to use a, it's called Windsor Newton blue. Is that right? Look. Windsor blue, Windsor blue by Windsor Newton. Windsor blue and a manganese together. Oh, look at that. It's just gorgeous. It's just a beautiful blend. Okay, so I think I've given you a few tips on some colors. Let me see what else I love to use. Let me see what else I love to use. I also love, um, it used to be a quinacridone, um, yeah, actually. One of my favorite things is also using teal. We'll get a little bit more teal out. And a little bit of deoxazine purple. So, Deoxazine purple is a very, very dark purple. So here you can see on my palette how absolutely dark it is. And let's see where we got some space left for you to see. So there's a very dark purple. Now, I love touching teal to this. This is probably one of my most favorite combinations. Touching teal to this makes the most beautiful grayed, grayed out purple and a little bit of a periwinkle. So let's add some more teal over here. It's just this gorgeous, gorgeous gray. Now let's add, I'm gonna add just a wee bit of um, green gold and let's see what ha oh i get a beautiful kind of gray do you see this gray that's happening down here that's gorgeous that's a beautiful gray let's try the deoxazine purple with the teal Instead, I mean the turquoise. I, I keep calling it turquoise. Let's try it with the turquoise instead of the teal. And again, it creates this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, rich tone. This is um, a little wild, would you say, this whole thing? But I think the colors kind of all go together. Let's do some, let's have some fun. Okay, another color that I love to do is the dioxazine again, mixed with, it used to be quinacridone burnt orange, um, but they've canceled quinacridone burnt orange. So I'm using a burnt sienna and a, what I find is with a deoxazine and a burnt sienna, it creates, let's do it on some white over here. It creates this beautiful, rich color that is great for shadows in rocks. I'm gonna pull you a little closer so you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous? So because of the way I mix that I don't fully blend, I've allowed the paint strokes to, the paint itself to mix on the canvas. Do you see all the different lights and darks and everything there? That is great for shadows of rocks and rocks. It creates all those lines and striations on rocks without you trying to paint in every one. Okay. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this hot mess. I may gesso over it again um, so that I can start fresh. But I'm having so much fun with this. So I'm actually just going to take a little bit now and have some fun and see if I can make anything of this. And this floppy brush, guys, this floppy brush is, is wonderful. I'm going to use a little bit of some fluorescence, see if I can, ooh, that red's fun. See if this takes me anywhere. I may just let it all dry and just so over it, but we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna take a little more of that green gold, maybe with some white and a little bit of teal. Let's see. The floppy brush. Oh, I love it. I love the fact that I have not washed my brush. All of the color, oh, you can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a blast here. I'm kind of using a washed um, green gold and kind of going over a lot to kind of, again, harmonize what I've got here. This I may paint over absolutely completely, but it gives you an idea of some color blends and some of my favorite favorite colors that I use all the time. So I think the three main ones that I love are green gold, uh, uh, maybe there's more than three, green gold, a teal by, green, by golden, and a deoxazine purple by golden, a burnt sienna, and a Windsor blue, and a manganese. The manganese is also by golden. I'll put them, I'll put that little list of a few basic colors in the bottom. But this mop brush again is so fantastic. I'm actually just going to come in with some water, get some drips going down, and we'll see where this turns out. <laughs> you never know. I might come in tomorrow and say, wow, magnificent, brilliant. Don't do a thing. When I look at it in the, in the camera, it looks very different than when I look at it here. It's really kind of interesting. I'm gonna bring you close and let you look at some of what, some of the textures and things that happened. I'm gonna flip the camera around. So here are some of the textures and things that are happening with the mop brush. So this is where we started with the green gold and then I've mixed green gold into various different colors and it's created quite a beautiful harmony, I think. This is the deoxazine and burnt sienna, gorgeous for rocks. This is the Windsor blue and manganese combo that I love, purple and teals. There you go. There's a little close up. If we go really close for a little composition. Is that an abstract there? We got different compositions that we can find there. We did some gorgeous grays down there. Ooh, look at all this neat texture. Fun. So the rest of the day today, I'm gonna to be working on finishing some 12 by 12 paintings and I'm working on this painting. This is a, a photo I took in Tofino in BC and I'm gonna be working on getting this ready for the Christmas season. Um, it's time, folks, if you're an artist, it's time for you to get ready and to start um, preparing so that people who wanna to come to your studios can come and just shop. So this is something I'm gonna work on today. I think I'm gonna get it done, but I wanted to show you for a while now some of my favorite color combos. Red is something that I'm finding that I'm using um, 
I use it in fall paintings for sure. I use it as the backdrop, the the uh, the ground of my my traditional paintings. I'm finding that I'm trying out white with the abstract because I am liking how the color stains uh, the white. And I'm finding that red is showing up in my abstracts more than it is in my traditional painting. So that is very interesting to me. Always learning something new about myself. And remember though, how we started this video. We started the video by saying, uh, re reminding you of the story when I was little, how I was told there were no blue trees. Well, in my world, there are blue trees and people like them. So I find that you need to just be true to yourself, paint whatever color you need. But if you need some harmony in those colors, try mixing them into each other and you will get some harmony. <laughs> What a hot mess behind me. But so I may I may end up gessoing over parts of this. We'll see. I may end up just taking cream paint and seeing uh, what I get from this. But um, as an abstract, I don't know if it's starting all that well because my rule is I like different kind of shapes. I think I'm rambling. Is But see how many of these shapes are very similar in size. I got to change all that. So I hope you have the best day. I hope you try something new. I hope you uh, paint a blue tree. I hope you paint a purple cow. I hope you do um, something in your, in your practice today that's artsy and you have a great time. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.